Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, we are talking about uh, interference and uh, the idea with interference is we're going to take these electromagnetic waves and we're going to stack them up and the way they stack up depends on a, a whole variety of parameters. So what is interference? Well, we're familiar with this idea that light is electromagnetic waves. And we know what an electromagnetic wave looks like. If we were to draw the electric field, it looks like this, a sine wave. Okay, what does this mean, really? It means that the electric field is pointing up, then it's pointing down, then it's pointing up, then it's pointing down, and so on. Okay, and it oscillates back and forth sinusoidally. So what we've drawn here, of course, is the E field pointing up or pointing down. But what happens now if we add two waves? So let's say we're going to take two waves and we add them together. All right, let's take E1. And let's add E2. And to start with, we'll make it essentially the same wave. Okay, so if I add those two together, E1 plus E2 would equal E3. And if I think about this for a second, I have an electric field pointing up, I have an electric field pointing up, that's going to double up, and they're going to give me a strong electric field pointing up. And then they're pointing down together, and so it gives me a strong electric field pointing down, and so forth. And so I get the original wave, but it's bigger. E3 is now the sum of E1 plus E2. We have to remember that E1 and E2 are vector fields. They have a particular direction associated with them. So this idea of adding two waves together is called the principle of linear superposition. So just like when we were talking last term about forces, we could add forces as vectors uh, to get a resultant force. Now we can add electric fields as vectors to get a resultant electric field. This is the principle of superposition. In this case, what we've drawn is something called constructive interference. Right? They have added constructively to give us a stronger electric field uh, for E3. But we don't necessarily have to add two fields that look exactly identical. So let's see what happens if we change those fields a little bit. Okay, so now let's start with a field, E1, that looks like this, just like it did before. But now let's add a field, E2, which maybe looks like number one, but flipped over. So if I add those two together, to get E3, what are we going to get? Well, we've got an electric field that's pointing up right there, but here we have an electric field that's pointing down. So it seems like those are going to add to zero. And in this next region, E1 is pointing down, but E2 is pointing up. So that's still going to add to zero. So in fact, E3 equals zero the whole way. If these things are the same strength, namely the height of the electric field is the same, and they are exactly flipped, then the resultant is zero. You've essentially canceled out that wave entirely. So this is something called destructive interference.
And believe it or not, this has applications well beyond optics. So for instance, you might be familiar with uh, headphones that are called anti-noise headphones. Okay, And the way an anti-noise headphone works is the following. Here's my speaker. And in the speaker, there is a little microphone. This whole thing is a speaker, but it also has built into it a little tiny microphone. And that microphone picks up ambient noise. So there is all sorts of noise coming from the environment. That ambient noise looks like a wave. It's a sound wave, of course. And that activates the mic. Okay, but ambient noise is everywhere. So that ambient noise continues right on through the speaker, the headphone, and is headed towards your ear. So the mic picks up that ambient noise. It now sends a signal down to the electronics box. That electronics box records that wave, flips it over, and pumps it back out to the speaker. And when it does that, the speaker now puts out a wave that exactly cancels the ambient noise. And by doing that, the resultant noise is zero. It removes all that ambient noise. And so these are called anti-noise headphones. They're really effective on airplanes, for instance. If you put on a pair of headphones and you click on the anti-noise feature, it sounds like the low sort of roar of the engine just disappears. And it can be a little disconcerting at first because as humans we like to have a little bit of white noise available and when all that noise goes away it seems a little strange. But it's also very comfortable for removing excess noise that you don't want. It works much, be uh, much better at lower frequencies than higher frequencies. Um, so like the low roar of the engines really goes away. And now if your system pipes in your music on top of that, you can hear the music very cleanly without any of that ambient noise. So it's really kind of a neat feature.